Hello everybody, this is Cake Tut here, and welcome to another video. Now, I haven't been making videos for a long time, uh, because I haven't been active, and I have other stuff to do, so it kind of takes away a lot of my time. And um, on top of that, last week I was like not feeling well, now I felt well, so that's why you kind of hear my voice sounding a bit weird. So, yeah um and i hope i could put as much video as much as i can and become as active as i can i i mean i might not be active in the future but i'll see how it goes so i'm gonna be putting videos whenever i get the chance anyway in this video i'll show you how to set up c plus plus in visual studio code and before i do that this is the first random tutorial video so i've been saying that in an announcement and i never actually delivered so i'll be doing that uh right now so and uh, so visual studio code is a what you call a code editor which is a fancy schmancy text editor so if you see notepad and warpad on your computer visual studio code is like that but a lot more advanced so if you really really want to um set up and code c plus plus you need to get a compiler first so in ide in ide software is like develop they require yes you require a compiler but everything is worked out of the box but it's only specific for a programming language. Whereas a code editor, it's not really limited to a programming language. It's basically, it's very, very flexible. You could code HTML and uh, in Visual Studio Code or any code editor and save it. And then you could just run it by just simply clicking on it. Um, that's basically how HTML works. Or you could actually uh, have another compiler for a different programming language like Java or Rust. Rust is actually a programming language, which uh, let's just go off tangent a little. Rust is a programming language is like founded in like 2011, 2013, that range. And its performance is supposed to be faster like C++. All right, so <clears throat> without getting further into tangent, let's get right into it. So I've pegged down a resolution because I was trying to make videos for diving uh, last week and the video didn't come out okay. So, so you'll have 720p. All right, so in order to so as I said, you need a compiler and I'm going to be using the compiler that I have used for the Civelop tutorial for C++ tutorial in Civelop, MySys2. So if you haven't know how to set it up, watch my first ever very horrible YouTube video, but it's very, very informative. Um, also, you can go to the website. I could just let me just open up a browser and you could just Google MySys2. Let me just get you to um, you can just Google MySys2, click on the website, and then you'll get all these instructions. And after you get these instructions, after you follow all the instructions, you're not out of the woods yet. You need to install the compiler for uh, in MySys2. MySys2 is basically a, how you call it, a crutch so you can download your compiler and external library. It's supposed to act like um, Linux terminal, but it's, uh, but for Windows. 
So to do that, uh, you just simply Google uh, Ming W Mysis2 install. And you, there's a bunch of forums that shows you that. Or you could, instead of install, you could just basically go to package. Yeah, right there. You just click on it. And yeah, you just basically have to find the min w this and then you just put to a chain on it. And to do that is basically doing that. So either toolchain or GCC. Toolchain is just gonna get you things that are not related to C++, whereas GCC is just gonna get you tool tools that are pertaining to C and C++. So you need to have pacman s or else you won't be able to install, and then this ginormous thing. I'll put this in the description. So once you get that, close it out, and then open up Visual Studio Code. And then, well, you're gonna get either this, or if you install it the first time, you're not gonna get this theme, you're just gonna get the original Visual Studio Code theme, and it's gonna give you the checklists to follow. And, I mean, you don't need to follow the checklist, you can just follow along what I do. So what you need to do is click on the where it says Explorer. So hover your mouse on the first icon on that side here. And if it says Explorer, click it. So yeah, once you hover, make sure it says Explorer. And there's a keyboard shortcut. And then you have, and then it's gonna tell you that no folder has opened. So let's just open a new folder. And you, it could be any kinds of folder. It could be, um, say, documents. It could be either um, it could be on the desktop, which in my case, I will save it in the desktop programming C++. And let's, let's make a new folder. Let's make it uh, tutorial because I already have to uh, press enter and then click select folder. It's going to load, it's going to take some time, and and wait a second, wait a second, any day. Oh, okay, it already loaded. Yep. So once you see this part, yeah, you'll have to hover your mouse to get these ones. To see those paper with the plus line, folder with the plus line, the refresh button, and the expanding, retracting. So click on the first one on the right. It's going to say new file, so click that one. And let's call it test.cpp and it's really important to put the extension the file extension name because if you don't put the file extension name it's just going to be a regular text editor visual studio code will only get to see it as a text editor all right so let's press enter and we're not out of the woods yet before you program make sure you go to its extension, so that's basically one, two, three, four, five. So the fifth icon down, and then you basically search for C plus plus, and I recommend get the extension pack because it has everything. 
so it has C, C++, it has the theme. And uh, let's close this one out. I'll, I'll show you how to get it back. Don't worry. So it has uh, it has all these themes. It has like the documentation generator extension. It has the better C++ syntax. It has a CMake tool, CMake, if you're into CMake, C++ themes, and just the C++ itself, allowing you to debug, uh, having IntelliSense, and basically code browsing. So once you install, so I already have it installed, but you need to install it, and it's gonna take two seconds, if not at least like half a minute to do it depending on your computer's performance and once you do that go back to your file and uh, follow along of, with what I'm putting I'm just putting a sample, sample code you know the hello world code that I showed you in my very first video? I'll be doing that. So include and then IO stream. I'm using namespace std and main. And then you put in CL. Hello world, followed by two exclamation points and end line. And then you save it by pressing Control S, or you could go to File and click on Save. And now you see these red squiggly underlines. Don't worry about it. They say it's undefined, but they're actually lying to you. I don't know why, but what I put in is correct. So once you're done with that, you go to that run and debug section, which is the fourth icon down, and then click on run and debug. It's going to give you two options either C++ GDB LLDB or C++ Windows. Pick the first one because C++ Windows is just going to only take you to have you set up the compiler from Microsoft. So Microsoft has its own compiler called MSVC which stands for Microsoft Visual C Visual C. And if you and by clicking on C++ window it's just gonna have you it's gonna have you set up that way and also the MSVC compiler is in Visual Studio just Visual Studio um, not Visual Studio code exactly it's not built into Visual Studio code because there's no compiler that's built into Visual Studio code but Visual Studio IDE itself has the built-in compiler so click on the first one, and then you're gonna have a bunch of options. So make sure it has the C drive, MySys64, MingW64, bin, and g++.exe. And once you do that, click on it. And it's usually the first one. And I forgot to get this one back, which you're, you automatically did it. And don't worry about this tab. If you have Python on it, you I think you'll get this one, which I will I will do a video, separate video on how to set it up. So as you see here, it's gonna indicate, it's gonna tell you that it's built successfully, and terminal will be reused by task. Press any key to close it, and it's still gonna. It's still compiling and running, as you see right here. It's because I was I'm recording, so everything is uh 
everything is slow. As you see here, it's actually running the program. And that means, so if you get where it says the program, this has exited with code zero, this means that uh, it ran successfully. So you could go back to the terminal and it's gonna, and it basically showed you hello world. You can run it again. Oh, actually that's nothing to do with it. You run in debug. And it's gonna run it again. And voila. And the reason why it doesn't get you this debug console like before, it's because so when you run it for the first time, it's gonna it's gonna basically make those kind of things for for the program to run. Whereas running it for the second time, it's basically telling them that we nothing has changed. Uh, you could you could run it again without you know any caveats and stuff like that. And there you go. Simple and hopefully not nerve wracking and not tedious. You can basically do pretty much any C++ programming here in Visual Studio Code. And it's really, really aesthetically pleasing to the eye. So if you really like this video, give it a thumbs up if you're on YouTube or you click on the fire button if you're on Odyssey. And you can comment my video, tell me what you think. And please subscribe to YouTube and hit the notification button so when I make, make new videos you are notified and I hope to see you again. Bye!